All right, welcome to CIT 15, week number one lecture. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about what we're doing in the class and then give you a little bit of theory and try to jam through this quickly because I know that people's uh, attention spans with video, uh, their attention spans are about this long. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go, well, first thing you should know is that there's laptops, there's iPads, and there's hotspots that you can check out from the library. So contact the library if you wanna learn about that. You could also use the Wi-Fi at City College in parking lot K, I think. So if you need Wi-Fi, you could go there and you could do that. Uh, next thing is what should you do in Canvas? You should come into Canvas and there's assignments, week one, there's a whole grip of them. You need to do all these, so knock all those out. And then under discussions, come into the discussions and there is uh, this week one getting to know each other, go introduce yourself. I don't care what you post, right? I'm not judging you on content. I just want you to post three times and respond to other people, create your own, Sorry, I'm at home. <laughs> My kids are here. I don't know what else to do, right? There's noise in the background. Uh, so, you know, create your three posts to each of those discussions and, uh, and share your thoughts and respond to people. I don't care what you say, so long as you're polite and cordial and, you know, use appropriate behavior that you would use in the classroom, right? This is about, create, about community, about you having a sense of belonging, about you making connections with others. That's what those uh, discussions exist for. So post a week one discussion. And the next thing you want to do is you want to go into My IT Lab. Inside My IT Lab, you could go to uh, course materials, and then there are these textbook PowerPoints. I've already downloaded all these, and I've uploaded them to Google Drive. And when you upload them to Google Drive, you could do the settings up here, right, inside Google Drive if you use Google Drive, and you could convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. So go ahead and you know, if you don't have PowerPoint on your computer, uh, you could upload them to Google Drive and it'll automatically convert them for you. So I've downloaded the, the PowerPoints and we're gonna go through one of those in a second. And, uh, and then also here inside course materials, there's the e-textbook and we'll also take a gander at that. And then the main thing you wanna do is inside Windows 10, there's an exam. You need to take this exam, okay? I don't care about the training. If you don't pass the exam, Go back and do the training. It'll teach you what you're supposed to do in the exam and then come back and take the exam. You can take the exam as many times as you want. And the computer, my IT lab, will always keep your most recent score. So do that exam. And then you also have a quiz. And the quiz is for here under this big exams, chapter quiz, do chapter 01 quiz. So that's what you need to do this week, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit of theory. And so if you feel like you got it, Cruise on. If you want to hear a little bit about, you know, computers and, and going through this material together, you can hang out. Um, I encourage you to hang out. So uh, one of the first things I like to talk about when it comes to technology is, um, is that, bam, we'll look at that in a second, is that tech is a tool, right? And so kind of like if you're going to learn it, to use any tool, like if you're going to the hardware store and they're going to teach you how to use a saw, right? A saw is a tool, or a chainsaw is a tool, or a drill is a tool. And if you use the tool, tool well, it will help you. And if you don't use the tool correctly, it will kill you, right? It will mortally wound you if you do not use a saw correctly. It will mortally wound you. And likewise, um, you know, what's another tool? Like a handgun is a tool. And so a gun is a tool. And if you use the, gun to the, the tool, which is a gun, well, it will help you. And so you will be able to hunt and you'll be able to protect yourself and you'll be able to help maintain social order, right? Like these are all skillful uses of a gun. If you do not know how to use the tool well, the tool can mortally wound you. And so, and just as it is with any tool, right? Whether it's from the hardware store or whether it's a firearm, so too it is with the tool, which is technology. If you don't use the tool, which is technology well, it will mortally wound you. And every day people die because they are not using the tool, which is technology, well. And so some of the things that you need to know to use the tool, which is technology, well, is that, like, I want you to check out this video. That's like a crazy, scary-looking trailer. Uh, and the video is uh, uh, text, it can wait, at and okay? And so it's this one right here, it's 10 minutes, 44 seconds. And I'm just gonna open that and I'm gonna save it to one of my inspiration deals and 
so that's good. So check out this one, and there's the URL right there if you feel impelled to enter it manually. But last text, AT&T, don't text while driving. So people are texting and driving and killing themselves and killing others. They can't help themselves but to look at their phone. And so part of using the tool, which is technology well, is to not look at your phone when you're driving. <laughs> That's one of the first things. And then there's also another really great video that I want you to watch. It's a movie. And the movie is Disconnect. And here's the trailer for it. And so you can go check out the trailer, Disconnect, official trailer, 2013. And, uh, and this is all about, you know, um, what's that, you know, I don't know the Shakespeare quote. There's some Shakespeare quote. Oh, what a web we weave. Web we weave. Shakespeare quote. Uh, one of the most quoted experts from Scottish poetry is derived from Canto 6, stanza 17, attributed to Shakespeare. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first, when first we practice to deceive. I don't know. I thought that was Shakespeare. I guess it's not. But, right? Like technology, you know, can deceive people and it can be used incorrectly. So Photoshop, videos, right? Marketing, images you're shown. They could all be fabricated. Like even when people are taking selfies, right? Selfies create a tremendous amount of suffering because you look at other people's selfies and you think that person's life, look at that life. Oh man, my life, what is my life compared? Or you look at their videos and you think, wow, look at that person's life, look at that video. And then you suffer because you're discontent with your own life. But what you aren't, you know, there, first of all, there is no equal comparison when you compare your life to somebody else's life. But what you aren't seeing is everything that's not, that was, everything that was edited out. When somebody puts up a photo or a video, right, that's very carefully crafted and composed. You know, they chose a poppy soundtrack for it. They edited out all of the mundane, boring, dull, idiotic, stupid things that they said, right? Like all of the things, right, which make us human, which come with the full part of being human, right? The whole spectrum of being human all gets edited out, right? And all you see is like, wow, that person's beautiful. That person's life is amazing. I want that life. And it creates suffering. So you got to know this tool, which is technology, so you don't fall into that trap. And, uh, and so that's part of what this movie, Disconnect, will start to show you, right? The illusion, the illusion of, um, you know, technology and what are you believing in? And, you know, people are posting stuff online and it's all consciously crafted for a certain effect. And don't, don't buy into it. So if somebody sends you, for instance, there's like teenage, you know, people selling sex online in the movie. There's stolen identity in the movie. There is, um, you know, somebody sending naked selfies and then that naked selfie gets posted around to everybody else in that person's school you know, and the psychological ramifications of that for somebody who's a young person. There's online bullying. Like all these things are in this movie and it's a really engaging, great movie. And so watch it from the context, from the frame of, you know, tech is a tool. Are you using it or is it using you? Like that's really what you gotta focus on. Tech is a tool, are you using it or, use, or is it using you? We're learning how to use a really powerful tool here more powerful than a handgun, more powerful than a saw, more powerful than a chainsaw, more powerful than a drill. Technology is more powerful than all of that. And if you don't use this tool well, it'll mortally wound you. It can mortally wound you. So heads up, right, on that first thing. And, uh, you know, so just some of the takeaways from this first lecture, you know, the foundation is you've been given a golden opportunity to even be here at school. There's many people around the world who would love to be in your position, who'd love to be able to go to college in America, who'd love to be able to work hard every day, improving their life and choosing a career and building a career like you've already won the golden opportunity. You are attending a college in America, which is like, you know, 7.8 billion people in the world we are one of the leading nations. And if you go to Gap, and I'm not just you know making this up, right? If you go to gapminder.org and look at tools, uh, they have the health and the wealth of nations. How healthy are people in different nations? How wealthy are people in different nations? And you can see this is for 2019. And so here's life expectancy over on the y-axis, right? That's health. And here's income over on the x-axis, that's wealth. 
and, uh, and then here are the different countries. And the color of the balls correspond to the continents, right? So there's Africa. And you can see if you're in Africa, you don't have as much wealth and you don't live as long, right? Like this country right here, you, you live to 63 and you make $838 a year on average. That's their average annual GDP per person. And, uh, and so Africa, that continent. If you're in the green continent, you know, uh, doing a little bit better, right? Here's the Southeast or the Asian continent. And here's like, you know, uh, the European continent. So we, here's the United States, right? Like we live to 78.6 years and we make $56,700 a year in income. Like you've already won the golden ticket. You're in the land of opportunity. And all these people below you would love to be able to go to school, to work hard, to get a degree, to you know become a doctor, get their doctorate, become a medical doctor, whatever it is, you have a golden opportunity. And the only thing you need to do to not screw it up is to not quit, <laughs> right? You just keep coming and you keep working hard and you're gonna get through it. And so I mentioned this before, but Angela Duckworth has that book, Grit, Amazon, and you should get this book on Audible and you should listen to it because this is going to show you how to succeed as a, as a student. So check this book out and remember that you've got, you know, there's very few people in the world. We're the largest ball farthest out here. Like maybe if we were in Singapore, you know, our lives might be a little bit better, <laughs> you know, but then we'd have to deal with fish sauce and all of our food. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, Luxembourg, right? You know, but it's pretty great. You've, you've already won. So that's the first thing is don't blow this opportunity. You've got a golden opportunity. No matter who you are, you can take advantage of it. Um, and, uh, you know, secret to success, focus, dedication, persistence, grit, tech is a tool, and uh, we're at a turning point. So just ignore all this stuff down here. So that's like the first bit, okay? That's the first bit. Tech is a tool. Check out that movie on texting and driving, or that, that video, AT&T, texting and driving. Check out that movie, Discontent. Disconnect, both very good. The next thing we're gonna do is take a look at uh, the PowerPoint for chapter one in the textbook. Um, you know, various tech tools being used to impact national and global issues, various global social issues that are being affected by technology, how technology is changing, how and why we connect, collaborate with others, right? Like we experience this every day, we know these things, social media, Facebook, dating, right? Um, social issues you know, people, uh, those close to us are sometimes more distant because we're looking at our phone instead of connecting with them. But those who are distant are more close to us because we can video conference with them, right? Social issues like that movie Disconnect is gonna go over a lot of those social issues. You'll see them in there. Different technology tools that are being used, you know, like um, Elon Musk is putting a new internet up in space and that is uh, Elon Musk new internet is a Skylink, Starlink, Starlink, here it is, Starlink, right? You know, like new technology coming online. It's all these satellites up in space. So everybody in the world will be able to connect. Um, summarize how technology has impacted the way we choose and consume products and services. Like it's, you know, totally revolutionized marketing and advertising. And it's all very targeted to a single individual now. Characterize computer literacy and explain why it's important to be computer literate. So literacy is like, you know, being able to read. So if we look literacy up, well, that's not what I wanted. Literacy defined, the ability to read or write. So computer literacy means you know how to use computers, right? Like that's something you know how to do. So you're literate with computers. So that's what you're gonna get in this class is knowing how to use computers well. Artificial intelligence systems and explain their main goals. So artificial intelligence is stuff that emulates human intelligence and that might be speech to text, right? So we could talk to our cell phone and the phone is listening to us. And then it's taking what we say and we all have a whole bunch of different accents. So right now I'm talking in my California accent. But if I wanted to, I could start talking in my Southern accent. And then the phone's gotta be able to figure out just what I'm saying with my Southern accent, right? And in New York, there's a different accent and there's a different accent. Like there's in Scotland, in Ireland, there's different English, in England, there's different English accents. And the phone can listen and figure out what the heck people are saying. It's amazing. So that's emulating human intelligence, right? That's artificial intelligence. And um, 
It's intelligence, which is artificial, <laughs> artificial intelligence, right? Uh, and AI and machine learning uh, are, are two, you know, relatively recent areas in technology. And so, you know, visual recognition, auditory recognition, um, you know, self-driving cars, uh, all that stuff, you know, that's coming. So what's that world going to look like when we have trucks? We no longer need truck drivers and buses. We no longer need bus drivers. And we don't have to drive ourselves, but the car becomes like a living room where we hang out as it transports us from one place to another. Uh, ethics we'll talk about uh, further into the course. And, uh, you know, but it touches on it in this chapter. Describe influences on the development of your personal ethics. Present examples of how tech creates ethical challenges. Ethical challenges arise no matter where you are in life. So I'm just going to power through these. I don't know how many there are. Let's take a gander just so we kind of touch on everything briefly. There's 27. Uh, technology in a global, you know, accelerating change around the world, galvanizing people in new ways. Galvanizing. It's kind of an interesting word. Galvanizing. Shocker, excite into taking action. Cast iron or steel with protective layers of zinc. And so um, shocking and exciting people into taking action. So we're, we're seeing like something called filter bubbles. And so filter bubbles, there's a YouTube talk on that and TED talk. TED talk filter bubbles. Beware online filter bubbles, okay? Nine years ago. And so basically, the, there's a unique internet for everybody. And you know, Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube shows me what I'm interested in. And so let's just say that I am, um, and you know, I'm just making this up here, but let's just say I'm a liberal and I'm really into liberal politics. If a website kept showing me things about conservative perspectives, I wouldn't wanna go to that website. It'd be like, this website just frustrates me, right? because all it does is show me conservative stuff. And so we get these tribes, these encampments, people become entrenched in their own little filters of how they see the world, where liberals are only seeing liberal stuff and conservatives are only seeing conservative stuff. And then it excites people, right? And it gets them fired up about their own views and it reinforces their own perspectives. And so we've lost this nice dialogue in society where we, we were presented with a moderate perspective of the evening news, right? Where it was like, you know, objective, a little bit of each, you know, and that rounded us out. Now we're just galvanized when one position or another, because all we see is our perspective reinforced. And the businesses, the web businesses do that because if they show consumers what they don't like, those consumers won't go to that site anymore. It's called filter bubbles. Uh, social networking tools enable groups to connect and exchange ideas. Crisis mapping tools collect and map information. Healthcare, environment, digital divide. So the digital divide is those who have technology and those who do not, right? So on one side of town, the rich side of town, people are gonna have more access to computers. They're gonna be more in the home. On the poor side of town, they're gonna have less access to computers. Um, that's the digital divide. And uh, I'm just looking through these, you know, all kinds of changes. So a lot of this stuff not, you know, I mean, you see this stuff, uh, access versus ownership, right? You could rent just a scooter or a car, car sharing just for a quick period of time. Understand capabilities and limitations, know how to use safely and efficiently. Ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Artificial systems or machines which perform tasks usually associated with human intelligence. Um, and, the goal of the 1950s was to create a machine that could think like humans. And so there's this test called the uh, Turing test. And it's named after Alan Turing. And maybe one of the movies I suggest you watch later on, if you're kind of into learning about this, is you could check out uh, Beautiful Mind. Beautiful, B-E-A-U, -E Beautiful Mind trailer. And that talks about Alan Turing. Or you could also talk, check out um, Benchley Park check out both of them. The Bletchley Circle imitation game. I guess it's called the imitation game. And it's about Bletchley Park. Um, but those are both about Alan Turing, who's a brilliant mathematician, helped crack the Enigma, the Nazis code in World War II. 
and he is then later persecuted because he was homosexual, and uh, and he was either killed or committed suicide because of that persecution. But he came up uh, with, um, you know, he, he invented one of the first computers, and then he also, this idea of machine learning and artificial intelligence, there's a Turing test. And the Turing test is, if you were to interact with me, and you couldn't tell if I'm a machine or a human, right? And if a machine tricks a human into thinking that the machine is human, then that is a sign of artificial intelligence, says the Turing test. So that's uh, natural language processing, like hearing stuff, right? Being able to, to turn what it hears and to understand the context of what's being said. Perception, sight, seeing things, perceiving the environment, knowledge representation, right? Knowing different things and understanding the difference between a hot dog and a hot dog, <laughs> right? Uh, or understanding the difference, classic one in English, between let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma, right? Understanding the difference, right? Uh, planning, problem solving, learning, all, all domains of artificial intelligence and machine learning and different ways they're going about doing it, you know, some of the ways they're trying to develop artificial learning. Um, so data mining, being an AI, you know, programming is a great career to go into. And if you are into programming, a good place to start is uh, you could just go to uh, Udemy Todd McLeod and then uh, take this course right here, uh, VS Code. If you're just getting into programming or interested in exploring it right here, Visual Studio Code, take that course. And then after you take that course, come in here and take this course right here and go. And uh, you can start to get into technology. Um, just looking through this, some of the ways technology is used. Medicine, psychology, ethics. And we'll talk about ethics later. I'm just looking to see what this says. Formal written standards designed to apply to everyone. Uh, not conforming to, so ethics is standards of behavior. Um, determining your ethics. We'll talk about ethics later, intellectual property, privacy. Uh, so intellectual property, we'll talk about that later. Uh, liability, censorship, social justice, social activism, and then that's it here. All right, so that's a little bit of chapter one. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a quick look at this quiz. And I might not do all these for you, but I might do some, there's 57 questions. So tools gather information from sources such as email, text messages, and tweets and make the information instantly and publicly available for use in emergencies. That would be, uh, I'd say, crisis mapping. You know, a lot of stuff you could just kind of figure out. Tools enable people to connect and exchange ideas, uh, social media. The gap in the ease of access to the internet and technology is known as the digital divide. The next Einstein initiative and the Institute of Mathematical Sciences bring bright young learners and best lecturers in the world together. I don't know. Uh, Canadian Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Computer Institute, Aus Austrian, African, uh, I have no idea. I'm just gonna say Canadian. You know, I might Google that if I wanted to find the answer. I don't know the answer to that one. Results when leisure time and available tools allow us to engage in creative acts. Um, cognitive surplus. And is a nickname for social media tools which allow users to co contribute content e yeah, easily. That's Web 2.0. All right, so you kind of get it, you know? And if you don't know this stuff, you can go back in the textbook and you can reference it. All right, that's it, 23 minutes, it's not bad. Most important takeaways, text a tool. Do you use it or does it use you? <laughs> right, you gotta be careful.